All right, how's it going, everybody? Here we are once again, another Monday morning. Let's go ahead and get uh, the chat pulled up here on the iPod. Good morning, everybody. Let's see here. It's a Monday morning. It's uh, the 13th of July. Here we go once again. Let's get her done. Another week, another beginning. Here we go. We are cooking. So if you're just joining, be sure to hit that like button. Um, if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe to the All Tied Up Fly Tying School channel here. We have a lot of fun. Uh, you never know exactly what you're going to get because, like everything else, it's always um, ever-changing. So, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> we got Mr. Hoisington in the house. Good morning, good sir. Hello. So here we are once again enjoying a, uh, another cup of coffee. Nothing fancy. It's just, um, I believe this is just your uh, dark roast, um, dark roast from Aldi. I'm an Aldi guy. Get all our junk from there. So anyways, we are going to tie up some flies um, to replace, replace some that I lost the other day. Um, I really don't exactly remember how I tied this, but I still have some of the material, um, and, you know, the, the fly I'm going to be tying, um, it was pretty hot. Uh, it was, the panfish, the sunnies were just going, uh, bananas for it, but I, uh, discovered that if I give it just a little bit more speed um, in the water instead of a slow kind of uh, kind of a twitchy move just kind of a more of a, a, a solid um, speed on that um, it drove the bass nuts largemouth were just smashing it so uh, I fished it for a little while and then um, then a tree got the better part of it <laughs> Uh, yeah, the tree got it. I could not retrieve it from the tree. Um, you know, that's a thing. And I feel absolutely terrible leaving something like a hook in a tree. Um, that's one of the things I, I uh, am conscious about and I tr really try to minimize. Not only that I'm just losing a fly, but I'm leaving it somewhere. And, you know, flies aren't things you just want to leave um, anywhere, so... You know, hey, fortunately, it was a barbless hook. Um, so if it does get stuck in anything, um, it, at least it has a chance of finding its way out. So. Just the other day, uh, last week, um, I ordered... I ordered on, on the interwebs. Um, it's a little backstory about 20 years ago. I was, I was young and I was fresh out of high school and I attended a reenactment baseball game of the, um, hosted by the Negro League uh, Baseball Museum. And back then I was just really impressed. Uh, the his learned a lot about the history of baseball and if you can't tell by the Cubs, Cubs stuff, I'm a baseball guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I bought a t-shirt and I bought a button, and the t-shirt wore itself out over the years, and found the button, and uh, this year, 2020, is the 100th anniversary of the uh, the Negro League uh, Baseball baseball League, and I bought a hat, or not a hat, but I bought a shirt to replace my shirt, and I bought a book uh, to donate to my little local library, and I bought a board game called Stratomatic. And, you know, I didn't know what it was when I bought it. But now that I've played a couple of games, dude, it's old school fun. It's like super analog. You're rolling dice. You're doing everything you would do on a fantasy thing. Um, it was a lot of fun. And it got me thinking, I wonder, I wonder if someone could help me come up with a fly fishing board game similar to that you know you roll your dice you miss the fish your your woolly bugger has certain power levels and weaknesses and 
I don't know. There's got to be something to it. So I'm planting that seed out there to the interweb. And, you know, I'm not the kind of guy. You know, if somebody comes out and takes this and runs and makes a billion dollars off it, I'll buy one. Um, so, I don't know. A fly fishing board game. Think about it. Um, I've, I've been thinking about uh, a fly fishing, uh, uh, f specifically flies for a deck of cards. But I think... Um, I might be onto something here with the board game, so I don't know. Let's go ahead and tie some flies. Mm, that's some good coffee. Let's slide over to the bench. Da, 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 Boom. Green screen. The green screen of happiness. All right, so let's get this started. <clears throat> What are we going to tie? See, I know what I'm going to tie because I have it visualized in my brain. But what we're going to be using, I'm going to be getting down with some R7. We're going to get jiggy with it. That's a jig hook, right? Size 10. Let's go ahead and get a couple of these out. What's nice about these jig hooks is they ride hook up and when you're trying to not snag on the bottom when it rides hook up it's just awesome all right let's get this in here all right let's see we might want to zoom in a little bit let's do that the fisherman of Catan yeah exactly I need to come into here and we're going to zoom in just a little bit. Sin sin bada bin. Maybe a little bit more. How's that? A little bit better. All right. I think that'll be just fine. All right, so we got our size 10 jiggy hook. Right, there we go. Standard wire, black nickel. All right, we're going to use an ADOT Vivas black. We're going to start this right up front. Next, we're going to get some bead chain eyes. We're going to tie these on. Right about there. Pretty close. Right up to the front. Right up to just... Not down the bend on that jig. On that, uh, I believe that probably looks like, what, a 60 degree bend? Thereabouts. Just like that. That's that's us. So we're gonna add. I don't know. I don't know if I have any Zappa Gap out, but we're gonna add a little bit of secret sauce, a little little insurance policy. I'm just gonna add a little dab. Not much. Oop. That's all it needs. And that's I don't know. It's not super glue, but it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt our effort here. All right, now we're gonna just take some plain black chenille and I'm gonna tie this in right up front. All right. Now we're gonna bring our thread to the rear. Yeah, I think I'm going to kind of rip off. I, I'm still thinking about the fly 
fly fishing um, board game. And I'm just going to straight up model it off of uh, the Stratomatic. Because it seems to work. All right. We're going to wrap our chenille from the front to the back now. Just like that. All right, so now this is where the magic happens. Pay attention here. Because right now it just looks kind of like a little nothing super exciting. But check this stuff out. Look at this. This is a flat, flat braid. Um, and look at the color on that. You tell me that's just not a fantastic color. So what we're going to do... So we're going to see how that frizzes out. So we're going to take a hook's length. And that's going to be our tail. We're going to set that right on top. the tight wraps. I'm going to go between the eyes. Pop that through the eye of the hook. Just like that. Now we got that underneath and on top. And now we can trim off our excess. like that. We'll give that a few more wraps. And then we're going to whip finish way back here. One, two, three. I don't know if you just heard my stomach grumble or not, but man. Trim off the old tying thread. Where's the bodkin? And we can clean this up back here because we actually want all that to just kind of fray out. Bada boom, bada bing. So when we're in the water, this is how we're going to be swimming. Just like that. What do you think? I think it'll swim. I think that's a fantastic idea. In fact, I know it's a fantastic idea because I've caught a few fish on this pattern. All right, let's give it a little drop of insurance policy on the back. Where'd that go? All right, little dab of glue ya. Let's get our bodkin and use that. drop on there Boom. right into that thread and that's all it needs that sucker is going to fish like a maniac awesome so that's one we're going to do a few of these we're going to probably I don't know we're going to stick with the basic same concept. I might do a few with a different colored uh, chenille for the innards. But for the most part, this is what we got. And this is what we're working with. My goal today um, is to get out and catch a sunny. I want to catch a nice little sunny today um, because the Fly Life Company, they have a t-shirt and it's got a big old sunny on it and it says Lucky 13. And guess what today is? It's the 13th. So, what do you say 
I go out there on the 13th and catch a sunny. On the 13th, with my lucky 13 shirt on. I don't know. I think that would work. All right, let's get our chenille. Super fancy, just plain old black chenille. Just tie that in right up front, right behind the eyes. Maybe on this next one, I'm gonna give our chenille a little extra wrap or two behind the eyes. Maybe we'll build up the bulk. This is actually the hardest part right here is just getting your thread to the rear. Let's go ahead and wrap this. A couple wraps right back there. That'll help us with a little bit of a taper. All right, where'd our French flat blade go? Here's, here's that piece, but I know I had a smaller there it is. All right. Measure at that hook's length. Tie that in on top. down. Pop that right through the eye of the hook. And I'm not too worried about where this ends up before I trim and fluff. I do want to maybe add a wrap or two underneath. Kind of help post those up, prop that up a little. All right, let's whip it. I'm gonna do better than that. All right, well, a two turn whip finish and a half hitch. Even that out. And then we'll pick it up. We got our little tail. We got a little bit too far back, a little bit too far into the bend there, but that'll be all right. didn't do we didn't add any glue onto those eyes but you know what that's just fine it'll be okay so let's see here oh this is gonna take a pause so what do we think Questions, comments, concerns. Looks pretty cool, huh? So who do we got watching this morning? We got Jordans in the house. That's one of five. I know I'm one of five. That's probably, I probably count for two or three. Um, but here we are. Another week. Um, I 
I already forgot. No, I think I'm trying to think of what um, we're gonna tie. What I'm tying next um, this Wednesday. Um, I don't know. When you tie enough flies and you do enough videos. I don't know, man. I feel like Stephen King trying to scare somebody now. It's like I'm kind of running low on ideas, but uh, there's always variations and stuff like this. I don't, I don't know if this is in a book. Um, it's just kind of based off of uh, the mylar minnow. What kind of fish eat the cute ones? Well, this particular cute one, I had sunfish. I had crappie, I had bluegill, I had um, largemouth bass, and that was it. So, all sorts of fish. I'm sure if I got it in front of a trout, I'm sure there might be a trout that would smash that. That's the beautiful thing about flies, is there's really not... You know, it's not like this is a specifically for that fish, or it can only catch that fish. It may have originally been designed to target a certain species, but after that, I think things just kind of, people do what they want with them. I do what I want. But let's do a couple more of these ones, and then we'll switch colors. A little, little itch. Back to the bench. We got Ben in the house. Good morning from Davenport. Every time I think of Davenport, Iowa, I always think of my grandmother. Because grandmothers, for me, were the only people that I knew that would call the couch the Davenport. Things like Davenport and Barker Lounger. Like, nah, it's a couch and the foot's footrest. <laughs> right, let's give that a little dab. How is it? How is Iowa today? I bet you it's nice and muggy. I'm sure the corn is just popping. That's the thing. For me, when I think... You know, I have a lot of, uh, my sense of smell is, for me, it's really sensitive as far as triggering emotional responses and thoughts and memories for me. And, you know, it's, when I'm out in Iowa, or when I'm out anywhere, and I just get a good whiff of a solid cornfield, that reminds me of visiting my family there in western Illinois and Iowa and the beans gotta like the beans right, let's go ahead and run our thread to the back
just like that. All right, here we go. I've used the last of the stuff that I had cut off. So this is um, Lagatrum. Anyways, this is a nice, I, I really like this. I got this from our good friends up north in Canada. From the Fly Life Company. Super simple. We'll take our tail. We'll tie that in right there. All right, we'll fold that down. through the eye of the hook. Carefully bring that up and underneath. Let's see, fray that all out. Sometimes you want things to be afraid. I like that one. Quip finish. One. Oh, I seem to just never get past the second one. Let's try our other whip finish. It's just a little bit bigger. trim. Boy, it doesn't get much more simpler than that. She'll ride hook side up, hook point up. And I've caught some pretty good large mouth on this. Smaller largemouth, because I'm fishing in a, in a small little lake, little urban lake. That and, uh, you know, the thing is, I, I, I really don't remember exactly what the innards was on my... Uh, one that I was fishing a while ago. I don't remember what I put on the inside. I think I might have just went with a dubbing or something. Um, but this is uh, my attempt to keep it just a little bit more simpler. Probably add some... Um, well, you know what? Let's do that. We could probably add a little weight to some of these. But they, they seem to be pretty good on their own as they are. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do anything. I don't need them to sink any faster. And these are something I, I guess you could pretty much tie with, you know, very easily sourced materials. You could easily... Uh, make a variation of this. I suppose you could swap out a lot of different material. You know, instead of the uh, flat French braid, I'm sure we could probably get away with just using um, flash. Just tie it in back there, wrap it around the dumbbell eye. Speaking of 
awry. I gotta put that on. So I'm gonna build this up just a little bit where I'm gonna put my eyes. And what that does is that increases the diameter of the shank of the hook. So we have a skinny thing going on top of something that's not quite as skinny. So that kind of helps keep everything set and square. We always want to be careful when we're messing around with bead chain eyes because that little hole right there has some sharp edges to it. And if the link, the bar in between that got cut, half of it's going to be in there or half of it's going to be in there. And you have to be careful when you're tying that that doesn't kind of rattle itself out but inside when you're stripping it and dancing it it should make just a little noise I don't know how audible it is at least for us to hear it but we'll take our chenille bada boom bada bing This is literally the hardest part about tying this fly. Beautiful. All right, we'll take our chenille couple wraps right back there, taper it down, and just like that. Eyes don't have to be super complicated to be effective. This definitely falls under the keep it simple stupid principle, which is a good, a uh, good, good, good. Um, what do you call it? Just a good rule of thumb. Keep it simple, stupid. I guess, alternatively, I could just lift and lower that. And once you pop that through, it's there. Uh, everything's holding itself together. Now I'm sure if you get a toothy critter on this, it might be a little fragile, might get tore up. It might not. Just whip it by hand, A.A. Ron. Come off our excess. Spray that out. And there's a good majority of it, approximately half of it. It's going to want to go to this side of the hook. Or 
right, how about that? And a little bit of insurance policy. Do it. Let's go. All right. And that's how she's going to swim. A little something like that. I don't know. Ouch, that was my toe. I just rolled back on myself. Well, what do we think? I think, what do we got? We got one, two, three, four. Got four, four of those. What do we think for a different a different color for uh, chenille. Let's think about some different colors for chenille. And I'll be right back. All right, we're back. All right, let's see. The suggestion was, what about pink, white, or chartreuse? Chartreuse is where we're going to start with, I suppose. Because for me, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. That's what they say, right? Let's see if we can't find some chartreuse. Ooh. This is a, a woolly bugger antron chenille small fluorescent chartreuse. I think that's going to be us right there. I also have, uh, let's see. A pretty big straggle string. We'll save that for something else. Yeah, we'll start with some chartreuse because I think chartreuse is close enough to white. We'll do some chartreuse and then we'll do um, maybe like a red. I don't know. We'll do a couple of chartreuse. 
Again, you know, these are a very super, super simple tie. There we go. Size 10. Where'd my bag go? There we go. Alright, let's go ahead and get this going. All right, let's get our, our dumbbell eye. You know, dumbbell, these uh, B-chain eyes, I've got them, um, they come in, obviously, they come in different um, sizes and diameters. Uh, let's see. That would be eighth inch like eighth inch to me and it's just a little bit bigger but that's the size I'm using three millimeter all right sure true oh we need to do our beads I keep a good portion of them still on the string, but I'll sit there with a pair of uh, angle cutters, side cutters, and lop a bunch of these off in pairs. Drop is a secret sauce. That works. Again, it doesn't have to be two bananas. the sound of my elbow hitting my coffee mug. You want to talk about feeling scared? I suppose one of these days I should just take some time and clean my bench off because it's a hot mess. There's no other way to say it. Nice and centered. Pop that through. 
through. Make sure it lays nice and flat. one more on there. How sweet is this? I think I like the chartreuse. Cement. A little bit of the secret sauce. Shh. Don't tell the fish it's there. I was fishing a woolly bugger the other day, and it was one that doesn't have a wire counter ramp holding the, the hackle down. Man, I had a couple of bass on it. It exploded. It was awesome. I wonder what the average shelf life is for a, a fly. How long do you expect a fly to last? Because I feel bad, but don't feel bad these turkeys that go out there and buy these crankbaits that uh, they're like they're double articulated they've got three treble hooks on them and they're still in the, wait that's huge wrong one that's too big they got two sizes in one container that's a little bit more reasonable. work the thread into the glue or the head cement. fuzz off. Give us something solid to tie into. And that's why we put our cap on the Sally Hansons. Again, I should probably clean off my bench. It is a hot mess. Maybe after we're done with, with this, maybe one more fly after this. I'll, I'll zoom out and show you guys the, the full case of the uh, full exposure of the madness. Okay, 
but this one's just a little bit skinnier. I'll try that one on this one, and this one only. everything a little bit too far forward or not. I think we'll have just enough. I mean, come on. Why do we have to make fly fishing and fly tying so complicated? I don't know. Probably get a couple more done. Maybe one more done after this. Then I gotta go get groceries. It's that time of the month. We go out maybe twice a month to get groceries. I really don't like going. gotta eat we gotta eat right all right so we did chartreuse I was gonna do a different colored I was thinking maybe a red but I like the chartreuse maybe a white would be a good color As much as I'm saying red, I'm actually saying pink, thinking pink. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab this one because it's just got a little bit of flash to it. A little bit of flizz ash. I think I can get away with just the black, the black thread. It kind of disappears, disappears in at the aft end, back into that uh, the fly.
right. Let's get a little dab of the secret sauce. Just a little bit in there. Don't have to glob it, don't have to bobble it. Work your thread into it. Work your thread into it. Too easy. Alright, we wanted our pink. This is this is the last of this. Not much left. Pink, a little bit of sparkle. That's all she wrote. I like that. A little bit of uh, a little bit of a little pink in there. All right. I don't want to kind of. Too big of a piece. I don't want to waste much. That'll work. Yeah, buddy. gonna be it. Use our bodkin on this. One little drop. All right. There. She be. We got pink. We've got chartreuse. We got the OG. What do you think? I think it's fantastic. All right. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> All right, so here's the madness. We're gonna zoom out. Here it is. This is this is the bench. That's uh, stage right. Uh, 
<laughs> and stage left. Oh, we got a lot of madness happening. But anyways, it is what it is. Thread, and we got some of the books, but not all of them. There we go. Kind of the one-off flies and other things. And we got the trash can and. This is where I get to see where you guys are chatting to me. But Yeah, that's just half of it. We'll whack that back in. And then maybe we can go over there and check out our flies. What do you think? I think that's fantastic. And that's it gonna that's gonna be it for the day. We're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna call it a day. What do you say? Happy Monday, everybody. I'm hoping everybody has a uh, fantastic week. Um, you know, go out there, do something good. Do something good for yourself and do something good for somebody else. Um, kind of no questions asked. You know, we can all we can all make a difference. We can all do good. We all can do better. we go so hope everybody joins me um this wednesday we're going to be doing some um i have no idea i'll <laughs> i think maybe the chernobyl chernobyl ant i think that's what we discussed i have no idea but we did it we made our way through another one Happy Monday, indeed. Be kind, rewind. Thank you all for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe. Happy tying. Tie lines. Peace.